Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and I've got all kinds of really fun vinyl projects. So if you're like me, I did not have a lot of experience working with vinyl before I made all these projects. I actually, one time I, I, I brought a uh, visual aid here. My first vinyl project was a lot of times when we have a lot of people over, people don't know um, where to throw, you know, recycling versus garbage. So I wanted to make it clear so that I can recycle everything. And um, so that was my first attempt at vinyl. I was actually kind of intimidated and nervous. And I was like, oh, there's so many steps. Do I do it, you know, do I do it backwards and have to like transfer it somehow? I wasn't sure. But <clears throat> once I looked it up, um, I looked up some tips online and I did that, you know, this summer. It was so easy, I couldn't believe it. And it was real easy not to get any bubbles in the vinyl or anything. So <clears throat> I just couldn't believe how easy it was. So I just want you to know my experience, how it went that way for me, because if you're feeling intimidated at all, I can totally walk you through all the steps that I do to make all these fun different projects with vinyl. And hopefully you can have some fun too. So I wanted to make some really fun projects for Christmas and the holidays. And I just love all the really beautiful chalkboard art that I see all over um, Etsy and Pinterest and in, in shops around town. So I, I thought long and hard and I, I took a long time to design this whole design so that it fits perfectly on this chalkboard. And I think it looks super cool. And you can get this chalkboard at Joanne Fabrics and it comes in two different colors. And it all the information about it is listed in your PDF, which comes with your download. So you can find this at Joanne, or if you want to do it on an 8x10 surface or 11 by 14 that is also included in your download. So this is super simple to create. You really just have, it's in, it comes in two segments because it wouldn't all fit on one piece of 12x12 12 12 vinyl. And I'm going to show you here in a minute how easy it is to just basically just kind of slap it on and make sure that it, there's no bubbles or anything. And before you know it, you're like, wow, that is super cute. So I have a nice little bow to hang it from, which is a possibility, or you can stand it up somewhere. So I was really happy with the way that that came out. And so I also wanted to make some more cool home decor stuff. I think my next favorite part of this collection of vinyl is this. And this tin, actually, it's just a plain tin. It's a, you know, a copper color. And I got this at Joanne Fabrics also, and it comes in a couple other colors. But you can see this very subtle brocade pattern that I put on here with chocolate brown vinyl. So I wanted to make something that I would love to display in my house that looks really classy. So I hope you like that too, and if you make it, you will definitely have to share, share photos. And the cool thing about this tin is that it comes with a plastic liner so that you can even put real, real flowers inside. Like I use dry foam with these silk flowers, but you could use wet foam and put real flowers in there. It would look awesome in your house or you can bring it as a gift to someone and they would totally love it. So love that. So the next thing that I wanted to make were some pretty floating candles. Cause if you go to the craft store, any craft store, it's real easy to find all different kinds of sizes of these glass cylinders. And they have all kinds of different colors and shapes of floating candles. And then on Pinterest, I saw some really pretty floating candles done with cranberries. So I said, hey, I want cranberries in mine too. So this lace design up here can be adapted to almost any dimension of glass cylinder. So I'll show you that in just a moment, how I take a measuring tape, just measure real quick, subtract a quarter inch to leave a little gap, and then you just apply the design. It's so easy. And once again, in your home, it would look so pretty and so classy. I love it. I'm going to keep it out. Or again, as a gift, someone's really going to love it too. So next we have our cute little arrow, which I bought at Michael's and it's in the wood section. And I would imagine they'll probably carry it for, for some time. So it was just a plain wooden arrow and I painted it with some special Martha Stewart crackle paint, which I had never worked with before. And I love the way that it came out, how the edges have some like distressed crackle because I only put the crackle stuff around the edges because I didn't want to apply any vinyl to any paint that was crackled. So I will show you that more in depth here in just a minute with the paint and everything. But I, I love how that came out. It's nice and swirly and kind of crazy. Or if you want to just keep it simple, we also include this in your download so that you can apply that to any other project that you want. 
So some other things that you can apply to pretty much any other shape, like this jingle element here. I got this tin at Joanne Fabrics, but again, this, this jingle um, caption here could go on a circular surface or a square rectangular surface or whatever. So you can have a lot of fun playing around with these cute little captions on just cute things that you find at the craft store or in a regular store. And if you want to make them exactly how I made them, you can, again, just check your PDF, and I put all that information in there as well, which you can also look at on your iPad if you want to. Instead of printing out the PDF, you can always put it on your iPad if you have one. And we have a blog post on SVG Cut's blog about how to get your PDF onto your iPad if you want to do that. So again, another cute little, little sentiment on this paint can that I got at Joanne Fabrics. And again, my cute little lace design that's on my candles, I also applied to a jar and put some chocolate covered pretzels in there. So that's a super fun, super cute little gift. So the vinyl that I used, I just grabbed the first vinyl that I saw while I was at Joanne Fabrics and it is by Cricut. And I mostly used white. I also used this chocolate brown on the planter. They have all different kinds of colors. There's even a multi-pack of different colors. And then you're also going to need transfer tape, which is right next to the vinyl. And that's to help you stick your image right onto your object. So I used this Cricut vinyl because it was so easy to find at Joanne Fabrics and I was already there. But there's also a couple different kinds of vinyl and I haven't really worked too much with other kinds but I would imagine they're all pretty similar. Leo has actually worked with the Silhouette vinyl before which he, he made a wall decal of our logo in his studio and he said he liked that a lot. And I've seen the Silhouette vinyl at Archivers and I've also heard of people finding Oracle vinyl online. I don't. I haven't looked, so I don't really know too much about it, but that's another option as well. So let's take a dive into some of these projects. I'm not going to do all of them because it's really the same process for everything. You're just cutting out your design and you're transferring it onto your object. It's really the same, same exact procedure for everything. But I am going to put this together with the vinyl and the flowers and everything. I'm going to do the chalkboard and I'm also going to put some lace around one of these candle holders. So let's get started. So first I've got my cutting machine software open, which happens to be eCal. It's like sure cuts a lot for the Sizzix Eclipse because that's what I'm using. Maybe yours looks a little bit different if you're using a silhouette or something. So I've got my design pulled up here for my chalkboard and it is 11 by 9. So I've cut a piece of white vinyl to 11 by 9 and I'm going to put it on my mat. So here is my vinyl and it's a little, it's a little tricky because it's kind of curling up so the easiest way for me to do it is kind of just align this top these top corners up here I guess it's actually it's 12 inches wide instead of 11 but it's fine so there is my vinyl and I have this little popsicle stick which comes with the transfer tape but I also saw this nice Martha Stewart um, like squeegee tool, which really works even better. I mean, the popsicle stick is totally fine, or they say a credit card can work too, but this thing is nice and sturdy, and I just happened to see it while I was shopping at Joanne, and I said, hey, got to try out the, the squeegee tool. So my vinyl is in place. I'm going to pop it in my machine, and I'm going to hit cut. So I've already cut a lot of stuff out of vinyl with my machine here and my software and I already know that my the perfect pressure setting for me is one for vinyl because well in these presets there is a vinyl option and the vinyl pressure was set to, to one for that so I did that and it worked. If you want to be on the safe side and not risk wasting any of your vinyl you might want to do just a little small test cut like maybe a one inch you know, diameter circle or something, just to make sure that this pressure setting works for you too, if you want to bump it up or bump it down. The main thing is, you want to make sure that your machine cuts through the vinyl, but not through the backing paper. So that is how I do that. I'm going to hit cut and wait for everything to cut out. So one more
more thing to note is when you're putting your vinyl onto your mat, you want to make sure, obviously, that the vinyl side is up, which can be kind of tricky when you're using white vinyl because both sides are white. I actually did that the first time that I cut something out. I cut it on the wrong side. And you can always know that the vinyl is on the outside of the roll, so that helps there. So now is the time where I want to take off my excess vinyl. And to do that, I mean, technically I should be able to just pick up this corner and just kind of pull it off, but sometimes one or two little spots will get kind of stuck and then you end up pulling off what you don't want to pull off, which can be a little tricky. So you want to be careful and watch what you're doing as you're pulling it off. And for example, right here, there's supposed to be that a part of a, a letter here that's kind of stuck inside the vinyl. So I think something else that, that kind of helps is to, if you want to take an X-Acto knife, this is totally optional. I just found that this kind of helps me when I'm working with my, my design, is you, you really have to be able to see what you're doing so that you're not cutting into any of your design. But if you want to kind of cut away some of the excess vinyl to begin with, I think that helps when you are trying to, trying to pull away the excess. Because if there's two, if there's a lot of vinyl kind of flying around, it's all, it's all sticky. And if there's a big piece of it, it can be kind of hard to keep under control. So that is why I like to cut away the excess. And I don't even know if that's something that people usually do. I would imagine so. It's just something that I, I found that made things easier for me. And I didn't quite cut all the way through. And now I'm getting my vinyl stuck, but it comes right off. It's OK. So there's some excess vinyl that we can put off to the side. And now something else that I think I can do with this design, if you see a way to sort of cut it in half, again, being careful not to cut through your design, if you can cut it in half to kind of break through or break it down into two pieces, it's a little bit more manageable that way. Okay. So let's work on this top part here. And again, this process is completely the same for any, any vinyl project you're going to work on. Any of these little tips and tricks totally apply to, to everything. So again, I'm just taking my time. I'm watching what I'm doing. And at this point, I've got quite, quite a bit of excess vinyl that's just kind of kind of getting in my way a little bit, so I'm going to trim it away as I work my way through my design here. And in a perfect world, I could just kind of whip this off and be on my way. You know, maybe if I, if I put a new blade in my machine, that might actually, that might do the trick, so maybe this will even be easier for you even though I, I think my blade is okay, but who knows. Okay, so we're starting to get down to our, our design here. And I find the, the best way to get these little middle pieces up is to kind of kind of pick at it with an X-Acto knife or any kind of little sharp, sharp surface. And I think people call this weeding when they are getting rid of these little, these little pieces. I've heard some people refer to that as weeding, so I guess I'm weeding right now. And those are all my little pieces are removed, so we can we can take a look at the rest of the design here. And again, just to make my life easier, I like to kind of cut it away as I go. That was nice and easy. And it's coming off really nicely. 
which is awesome. So I've got a few little small pieces to weed out in the middle of my, my word like here. And I'm just kind of poking at it and kind of lifting and poking. So we've got some, some negative space here to let it show. And now the word place is in the middle of my banner, so I want to expose the letters. So I'm just kind of, I'm pushing down on this letter C so that it doesn't come up with my vinyl. Same with this letter L. And something else that is kind of neat is for every single design in this collection, I went through and I, I zoomed in really close on every single, every single part of every project and I made sure that there are no sharp corners. So I went in and I rounded every sharp corner so that it cuts really nice and really smooth. So now it's time to put the transfer tape onto my design and that's just going to be used to transfer the design onto my object. So as you can see, this is what the transfer paper looks like and this red checked side of it is the sticky side. It can be a little tricky to, to peel it off the backing. As soon as I can get one of these corners separated and pull this off, there we go. Then all I'm going to want to do is, and even if it curls up on itself and if it touches itself, it's okay. It's not, it's not so sticky that it's going to be stuck. So I want to do my best to lay this so that it's nice and flat at least in the middle, and then I'm going to grab my squeegee tool or my popsicle stick that came with it, and I'm going to work from the, the middle out. So if there are any little air bubbles, I'm kind of just pushing them off to the side. And I'm pushing pretty hard because I want a nice firm grip. And I might as well go from all directions here. And now technically I could just peel this right off and get ready to stick it on my project. But again, I think it's a little easier to work with if we get rid of the excess transfer tape that is around our design. Because then we can see better what we are doing when it's time to put it on the project. So I'm just going around with my X-Acto knife and being careful not to cut into my vinyl. And I, I don't have to get real close up to the edge. I just, I think the more, or the, the more excess vinyl you can get rid of, the easier it makes your, your life. So now I can peel away this outer outer edge. And now let me let me grab my chalkboard because I'm about ready to put this vinyl on it. So it's time to put my vinyl on. I've got my chalkboard ready here. This one has a couple little blemishes on it which kind of stinks. I didn't notice that when I bought it. But I have read online about making sure that your surface is nice and clean because obviously if there's dust particles or anything, your vinyl's not going to stick as well. So it's really up to you if you want to go out of your way to really clean your surface. This is so easy to, for vinyl to stick to it that I'm not too worried about it. I kind of dusted it off and it's going to be fine, I can tell. So it's time to peel my vinyl design with my transfer tape off of my mat. And I want to place it just about a quarter inch away from the top and just do my best to center it right in the middle. Like so. And that might, that might not even be perfectly centered or 
perfectly placed, but it's, it's close enough. It looks good. So now I'm going to take my, my squeegee tool again and give it a final gentle yet firm squeegee all over, making sure that I'm pushing down on all parts of my design here. I think we're good. And the cool thing about this transfer tape is it's sticky enough, but it's not too sticky. It's like just the perfect level of stickiness. Nice and flat. And you just want to take your time and keep, kind of keep scanning along this line, making sure that everything is going according to plan here. And I've got this little stylus tool that I use for random things, like for this, if I want to push something down that's, that's small, that's helpful. And almost got it off here. So there is my design and I'm just going over it with my fingertips and just kind of making sure that everything is pushed down. And now I can go ahead and do the same thing to finish the rest of my design down here. So here is the second half of my design which goes right down here in the bottom of my chalkboard. So again all I'm going to need to do is get my transfer tape, put it on there, squeegee it real hard, maybe cut away the excess and apply it just the same way that I did before. So one final thing that I did on my chalkboard is I actually scribbled around with the chalk that comes with the, with the chalkboard. And it doesn't even have to look pretty. Just want to get a bunch of chalk in there and then just smear it all in so that you, you don't actually see any of those lines that I drew. You just see some nice chalk dust. So I think that blends it in and makes it look even cuter and more realistic and prettier. So again here's my my original final project and I've got my chalk dust all over it and then actually on some of these little circles I put some little sticky gemstones I thought that was cute so that's a lot of fun and again if you want to put this on an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 surface just check your download and there's some special files for those sizes too. So next for our French lace design, I think it's something that works really well on pretty much any kind of cylinder shape, especially glass, which is really easy to work with with vinyl. So first I want to take a little measurement and see, this is a little over 12 inches around. So I'm just going to size, I, what you want to do is size your French lace design to be slightly smaller than that. Like for example, as you can see on my existing projects here, there is, there's a nice little gap here. It's about a quarter of an inch or so. And we want a little bit of a gap left. So I went ahead and I cut out the French lace design for this glass cylinder at 11.5 inches wide. So there is my design, which I've already cut out using my cutting machine at 11.5. And just like before, same exact procedure same exact process. I've got my transfer paper in place and I really want to push down really hard so it's nice and nice and wrinkle free and everything. And then once again I think it's a good idea to carefully cut away a little of this excess vinyl. It just makes it easier to see, see what we're doing here as long as you're careful not to cut into your vinyl. So I can peel away this extra and now I can peel this up and I'm ready to apply this to my cylinder. So here is my design and I'm just doing my very best to maybe don't put it too close to the top because then it will be more obvious if it's a little bit slanted and not perfectly straight. I 
think all you can really do is your best when it comes to making it straight. So again, I really want this vinyl to stick to this glass. And of course, if you if you buy your glass and you feel like it's a little bit a little bit dusty at all, you, you do want to clean it off first, maybe with some nice glass cleaner, make sure it's nice and dry. It seems like they always carry these, so sometimes they might sit on the shelf for a while and get a little dusty. So I'm starting to pull up my design here, and this one little piece wanted to come off, so I'm just holding it in place with my little stylus here. And again, in a perfect world, I could just peel off this transfer tape and the vinyl would just stay in place. But sometimes it needs a little bit of help. So what you want to do is just carefully peel it away helping it where necessary by just kind of holding it down as you peel away the transfer tape. So you just want to do this all the way around the candle until your whole design is in place. So as you can see, I'm just working my way down and some areas are a little easier than others. And sometimes I still encounter an occasional little piece that wants to come out of place. So I just have to take my time and carefully peel away my paper. So here is my finished design. Mine's a little bit crooked. I'm sure yours will be more straight than this, but it's still totally cute. I'm still going to put it out and use it. So for this vinyl design, it goes on the same way that you saw before, so I'm not going to show that again. You, you can do it with the, the techniques that I've been showing, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about this really cool crackle paint around the edge. So the way that that works is I picked up this Crackle Effect by Martha Stewart Crafts at Joann Fabrics. I'm pretty sure they probably have it at Michael's too. And first what you do, the directions are on this, but what I did was I painted it all white first so that the white shows through the crackle. So then next, after you paint it all white, I, I put the Crackle Effect just around the edges because I didn't want to try to apply vinyl to crackled stuff. It probably wouldn't work very well. And then I applied red all over it, and then the red crackles, and you see the white through it. So I think that's totally cool. And then on the back, all I did was I picked up a little package of these guys, and I centered it, and I just hammered it in. So they have these in the, the picture frame section at the craft store. So finally, for my metal tin planter with poinsettias and this pretty brocade design, as you can see, this, this brocade is just brown vinyl on this pretty copper color. And this planter I got at Joann Fabrics. And again, in your PDF download, it says more specifics, but here it is, just plain. And it also comes in this pretty color, which maybe that would look nice with white or something. I started to mess around with that one and I changed my plan, so. That is the planter and here is the vinyl. So as you can see, it's kinda, kinda skewed because this is actually, if this was straight, it would be too wide for the mat. So that's why it's a little skewed. So these are, you know, the front, the two sides, and then these two strips down here just go right here. So you want to make sure that your surface is as clean as possible. No, no dust or anything, and even oil from your fingers could cause the vinyl not to stick as well. So if you want to go ahead and clean yours first, that might be a good idea. I did not, so hopefully the vinyl sticks pretty well. As long as you get the idea of how it works, that's all that matters. So I'm going to go ahead and put my transfer tape on and maybe I'll just uh, I'll just do one of these sides right now and you can tell where everything goes so it's pretty straightforward. So obviously my, my vinyl design here on my mat has already been weeded and now I just want to apply my transfer tape to the whole thing and then I want to make sure there's no bubbles or anything. I'll grab my squeegee tool, give it some nice squeegeeing, and then again I'm going to take my X-Acto and not only slice these apart so that I can peel them off separately, but get rid of some excess so that 
so that it's easy to work with these pieces. So go ahead and kind of cut away the excess vinyl, being careful not to cut into your vinyl. And let's get these pieces ready to stick on the tin. Okay, so I've got the side of my my tin, which I, I have not cleaned. That's probably, you, you probably want to clean yours because if it's got anything on it, it's not going to stick as well. But I'm just going to dive in and, and stick it on anyway because as long as you understand how to do yours, that is all that matters. So I did my best to center this. It's a little, a little too far off the bottom, but you know what, in all honesty, I don't think it's going to make or break it. I think when you look at the finished, the finished product, you just say, wow, that's pretty. You don't really analyze the, uh, the placement of the pattern. So you can be even more careful with yours. And I really want to squeegee this on because I want my vinyl to stick really well. So let's hope, it would be nice if I could just peel this off without finagling too much. But as I've learned with vinyl, sometimes it just requires a little bit extra care and a little extra patience as you peel away your transfer tape. And I think it really depends on the surface that you're using to apply your design to, like this. This metal is a little bit less, less adhesive with the vinyl than glass is. I think maybe glass is a little bit easier. Oops, I actually just ripped. Oh no, I didn't, it's good. There was a tiny, tiny piece down here, and I don't even think it matters to the overall look if that is missing. So if it sticks when you pull it off, great. If it comes off, I think that's fine too. So as you can see, I'm just peeling away my transfer tape. I'm scanning back and forth on this edge, keeping an eye out for anything that needs a little help sticking down. So now I can go ahead and just kind of push down, make sure everything's all good. And then I want to go ahead and do the same thing on the front and on the other side. So as far as putting the flowers in, I mean, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory, but in case you're wondering exactly how I did it, I, well, this is wet floral foam, which I guess you use with real flowers because you can add water to it. But if you're using silk flowers like I am, you want to use dry foam, which I don't have any dry foam left. I just have this wet foam. So let's pretend that it's dry foam. And actually, you know what I did is I didn't even take the plastic off. I just put this, put one of them in there. And then I kind of eyeballed how big this other one should be. I'm gonna cut it right about here. And I've got just a, uh, a random steak knife that I use for random crafts. And as you can see, I'm doing this on top of a piece of paper because I have read online that this foam stuff is really not the greatest, healthiest kind of stuff. So I want to keep it as contained as possible. And as you can see, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to shove it in there. It's actually a little bit too big. So I want it to be snug, but I also want it to fit in there. So let's cut off a little bit more. And just push that down inside so it's nice and snug. Now at this point, I want to contain all the dust, so let's move this to the side. This I'm gonna wrap up later. And the excess, I'm just going to, I'm gonna fold this whole piece of paper in together and throw that. Maybe I'll throw the foam in the trash, throw the paper in the recycling, and now let's stick some flowers in it. So the way that I did my flowers, I am certainly no uh, like florist or anything. I just kind of mess around with it and do some things I've seen before until, until I'm happy with it. So what I did is I cut some random raffia, 
which I placed in there. And you know what, I'm not gonna really, really do it for, for real here. But you get the idea. For my original one, I just kind of stuck some green raffia to hide the foam a little bit. I'm out of green, so I'm trying brown. Green might be better. And then I've got a, uh, a nice little, little bundle of poinsettias from Joanne Fabrics here. And I want to use my wire cutters to snip those off. And then I just stick them right in there with the, uh, the raffia looks nice. Well, my raffia is not really arranged, but you get the idea. And you can always pull it out and readjust if necessary. And these would look fine just on their own, I think. But I also got some of these guys. So I snipped a couple of those off and I pushed them in from kind of the side so that it looks really nice with that little touch there too. So there you have it, really fun Christmas and holiday decor for your home or for gifting. And I think people are really gonna love it whether they come over and they see it during the holidays or if you make it as a gift. Super fun, super special, you can get extra creative and it's fun to take a step outside the box of our usual paper crafts. So if you make any of these projects, you'll definitely have to share a picture on our wall or on, you know, on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, or on your blog. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.